is Mari Elaine on the Buying Space channel. Today I'm finishing Tobit. Uh, it's been quite an adventure for me to read it. I've never read it before in my life. I've never had a Catholic, uh, well, I have had a Catholic Bible before and I gave that to my cousin at his confirmation uh, because he's Catholic. And I wanted to uh, explore the Inner Testament a little, and now I've finished Tobit after this reading. I'm not sure if I'll continue the Inner Testament. I've always heard about the Maccabees, uh, but you know, I could read that on my own. But uh, if you're enjoying this series, give me a thumbs up and put in the comments why you want me to continue. With Tobit, uh, I would really appreciate some feedback. Uh, my plate is full. I've got a ton of books coming in. Um, actually, a, like a pastor's library of books coming my way. <laughs> so I'm going to reevaluate um, what I'm doing as far as my readings. And since I'm going to end here, I could stop maybe doing this unless, you know, I've got people out there that are telling me, no, please continue to read Tobit or please continue to read the Apocrypha or Inner Testament. So um, it's going to be up to you folks whether uh, these readings in this Good News Bible in the Inner Testament continue or not. So you've got to let me know. So we're in Tobit 14, starting with verse 1. Tobit was 62 years old when he became blind, but after his sight had been restored, he lived a very full life. Once again, he gave generously to the poor, and he continued to praise God and tell of his greatness. Tobit died a peaceful death, at the age of 112 and was given an honorable burial in Nineveh. But just before Tobit died, he sent for his son Tobias and, was, and told him, My son, take your children and go at once to Media. I believe that God's judgment, which his prophet Nahum announced against Nineveh is about to take place. Everything that God's prophets told Israel about Nineveh and Assyria will happen, and it will all come true, every word of it, when the right time comes, and I am absolutely convinced that everything God has said is sure to come true. God does not break his promises. It will be after for you in media, safer for you in media, and in Assyria or Babylon. Our fellow Jews who have lived in Israel will all be scattered and taken from that good land into exile. All Israel will become a wasteland. Samaria and Jerusalem will be abandoned cities. God's temple will be burned to the ground, and I will lie in complete ruin for a while. And will lie in a complete ruin for a while. But God will have mercy on his people again. And he will bring them back to the land of Israel. They will rebuild the temple. But it will not be as splendid as the first temple. Not until the proper time has come. But when the time does come, all people of Israel will return from exile. And they will rebuild the city of Jerusalem in all its former splendor. They will rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem just as Israel's prophets have foretold. 
Then all the nations in the world will come back to God. They will worship him as the only true God and give up the idols which had led them into false worship. The nations of the world will praise the everlasting God by doing what he commands. At that time, God will save all the people of Israel who have been faithful to him. He will bring them together to Jerusalem and let them take possession of the land of Abraham. And there have they will live securely forever. And all those who love God with their heart and soul will rejoice, but sinners and evil people will be wiped off the face of the earth. Now, my children, follow my instructions. Worship God sincerely and do what is pleasing to Him. Bring up your children to do what is right. Teach them that they must give to the poor and must always remember to praise God with all sincerity. Tobias, my son, leave Nineveh now. Do not stay there. As soon as you bury your mother beside me, leave. Do not stay another night within the city limits. It is a wicked city full of immorality. The people here have no sense of shame. Remember what Nadad did to Akar his own uncle, and who brought him up. He tried to kill Akakar and forced him to go back to hiding in tombs. Akakar came back into the light of day, but God sent Naab down into everlasting darkness for what he'd done. Akakar escaped a deadly trap which Naab had set for him because Akakar had given generously to the poor, but Nadal fell into the fatal trap and it destroyed him. Now, my children, you see what happens to those who show their concerns for others and how death waits for those who treat others unjustly. But now I am very weak. Then they laid Tobit in his bed. He died and was given an honorable burial. Later on, Tobit's wife died and was buried beside her husband. Then Tobias and his wife moved to Ekadan in Medea, where they lived with Regal, Thomas's father-in-law, Tobias's father-in-law, and Tobias took care of Edna and Regal in their old age and showed them great respect. When at last they died, he buried them at Akaba. Tobias inherited Regal's estate as he had inherited the estate of his father, Tobit. At the ripe old age of 117, Tobias died, having lived long enough to hear about the destruction of Nineveh and to see King Cyprus of Medea take the people away as captives. To Tobias praise God for the way that he had been punished the people of Nineveh and Assyria. As long as he lived, he gave thanks for what God had done to Nineveh. And that is the book of Tobit. Like I said, if you would like me to go on and read any of the books in the New Testament, the Judith is next. Uh, please leave me feedback so I'll know what your wishes are. Because at this juncture, there are many uh, different thing directions I could go with my readings. If you have suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, and I'm looking forward to more reading in the future. I'm just not sure that I would want to read this all the way through unless I get uh, strong feedback uh, as to people that loyally listen. And um, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, God bless you all.